my lecture today is called Buddhism's Original Sin. We give or present to you an African or an African American or a black historical perspective of Buddhism. Now, we at the Proud Black Buddhists create this lecture for our African American youth who are looking to get into Buddhism or looking for a direction uh, for Buddhism. Many of us who started Buddhism, like myself who is a Nichiren Buddhist, we studied or we began Buddhism with the SGI organization, then as Nichiren Shoshu and Nichiren Shu. Uh, we present to you our over 45 year experience into the Buddhist teachings. Now, one of the things that we like our youth to understand is that we like you to use your phone and Google the word Dr. Francis Alexander Chamberlain. Now, Dr. Alexander Francis Chamberlain was America's first anthropologist and he wrote uh, in his history that the first shogun of Japan was a man of African descent. Uh, many of the Japanese that teach us Buddhism do not teach or incorporate uh, African history into Buddhism. They have extra extricated all of the black Buddhist history and they teach a Buddhism that uh, what I call racism because they have extricated all black history from Buddhism. But look up Dr. Alexander Francis Chamberlain and look up the word, the first Shogun of Japan. Uh, we people of African descent have a strong black Buddhist history. Now, while I am no Buddhist scholar, I am a free black man who thinks for himself. Let me give you a quick understanding of how we arrive to many of our conclusions in Buddhism. Many of you know about Thomas Edison who invented the light bulb. We know about Thomas Edison. Who Thomas Edison, Edison was taking the court regarding his views. This is some things about the war. And this young prosecutor kept asking uh, Thomas Edison about uh, questions he couldn't answer. They asked him one question, he couldn't answer this question, asked another question. Eventually, Thomas Edison got irritated and said, young man, if you want to know answers to these things, I have on my desk a box and I can push a button and I have 35 buttons at my desk and if I want to know something, I can push a button and in five minutes I can get you an answer that you want. Now, what Thomas Edison showed by this rebuttal to this young prosecuting attorney is that he don't have to know everything, but if he wants to know something, all he has to do is push a button and he could, at the snap of a finger, get something very quickly. So we who live in a modern technological society we have the ability to go right to our cell phones, go right to Google, and we can get information. So it is no excuse for us to be ignorant people. Years ago, I wrote on our Proud Black Buddha's website that the Buddha was black. Many white people wrote to tell me what difference does it, does it make. History and facts make a lot of difference. We have in our society what is called science. What is science? Science is the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. Just because a person is white does not make them right. Just because one is a high priest has nothing to do with the facts of science. The SGI, Nichiren Shoshu, Nichiren Shu, and many other Japanese sets 
have on their websites about the Vedic culture and the Aryan invasion theory. The Aryan invasion theory teach that there were some super whites who came to India on some chariots and some horses and they invaded India and they subject, subjugated the black people into what is called the caste system. Now, we have a science called archaeology. If some white or Aryan people did come into India, we would have carbon dating to tell us when such things happen. There should be physical evidence. Uh, the Vedic writings called the Vedas culture speaks of horses and chariots and bones and there should be some physical evidence of whites coming to India. Now, what science does not prove, there is no archaeological or anthropological or literary evidence of whites coming into the European civilization and dominating. India was the European culture or the Indus Valley civilization. Science teaches us that there is never any evidence of whites living into ancient India. So if the whites didn't live in ancient India, how did the Buddha move from black to white? Buddhism's original sin is racism. Now, in the Go Show, uh, Tripika Master Shawui, Nichiren writes this about truth. Nichiren says, one should not be intimidated by the fact that so many hold such beliefs, nor does the truth of a belief depend on whether it has been held for a long time or a short time. The point is simply whether or not it conforms with the text of the scriptures and with reason. While many of us Buddhists, we must understand that the Buddhist teaching should conform with the text of the scriptures and with reason. What we have in the world of Buddhism is a bunch of people who are not reasonable and we have many people who do not conform to the scriptures. I want you to look at these great Buddhist leaders like Dalai Lama, Daisaki Keita, and all of these people who we call themselves priests. What you have are some of the most despicable people living in our world. Nichiren writes in the Go Show, called the 14 Slanders, though a person may be, be, have been fortunate enough to be born a human being and may have ever entered and may have entered the priesthood, if he fails to study the Buddhist teachings and refute its slanderers, but simply spends his time in idleness and chatter, then he is no better than an animal dressed in priestly robes. He may call himself a priest and earn his livelihood as such, but in no way does he deserve to be regarded as a priest. He is nothing but a thief who has stolen the title of priest. How shameful and frightening. We have in the Buddhist world common thief priests. Let me explain to you about Buddhism's original sin. During the time of the Buddha, 642 AD, India was all black and they were called Naga people. Those of you who know your African history know the Nubian people. Nubians lived in Africa and Nubians lived in India. Herodotus called them Ethiopian people. The Naga king who organized Magadha was a Naga king called Sin Su Naga. They grew into an empire. The country of Kosola came under Magadha. Under the Naga king Bimbasara, they became known as the Magadha Empire. Now, Sin Su dynasty continued until 413 BC. The emperor was Mahanda. Mahanda was killed by the Nanda and the Nanda dynasty ruled up until 322 BC. Now, let me give you a history about the Nanda dynasty. Alexander the Great tried to conquer them 
and he decided not to challenge these black people. Please understand that a sutra by the name of Chandragupta Maurya defeated the Nandas. Chandragupta Maurya has a written history that can be traced to the document called the Indica. This document written by Magathisi, the writings of Magathisini, a Greek ambassador in the court of Chandragupta Maurya. This clearly proves that Magadhiski, the Brahman social order, was not formed at this time. There were no whites controlling things in India at this time. This is evidence that we bring to you at the time of Alexander the Great. There was no such thing as a Brahman social order or this caste system that we read so much about. Now, history tells us of the son of Chandragupta, whose name was Vindusara. He assumed the throne in 298 BC. Vindusara's son was Asoka the Great. Under Asoka the Great, these black or Naga empires is when Buddhism flourished. King Asoka left pillows and evidence of his work. The language of his work was Karasi script. We show you that Buddhism was in Africa, in the African countries of Egypt, Ethiopia, Abyssinia, and Nubia, 1,000 years before it ever got to Japan. This is what the Father of History writes about Buddhism in Africa. Herodotus speaks of Miro as the cradle of the gymnosophists or Buddhists. Now, Let's get into this original sin, and this is something that you must understand to understand Buddhist history when things happen. Now, in 184 BC, the black Muryam ruler by the name of Bihadatta was killed in broad daylight by the, his general Push Yashikmashitra. Now, who was the Brahmin general? This is what Nitran Shonen writes about Push Ya Mitra in the Gold Show. Now, one of the things that we like to do, we like to tie history in with our founder and teacher, Nitran Shonen, because we follow the teachings of Nitran Shonen, who teaches us that the Lotus Sutra is the highest of the Buddhist teachings. So those of you who are Nitran Buddhists, the things that we're teaching you, we're teaching you about Push Ya Mitra. Now, Nitran Shonen writes about him. Now, uh, Nitran Shonen writes about Push Mashitra in the Go Show. It's called The Pure and Far Reaching Voice. And Nitran writes, Moreover, King Push Ya Mitra led the five regions of India and wiping out the teachings of the Buddha and beheading Buddhist monks and no one, no matter how wise, could oppose him." Unquote. Push Yashitra was a very mean spirited Brahman and he really killed all the Buddhists. Now, in Miro, the land of Kush, Buddhism was the cradle of the culture. It was the Buddhists who brought their language of Karasi that influenced Miro language. Many of the Buddhists left their homes in India and they settled in Nubia in Egypt on the Nile River at this time when Pushmachita ran all the Buddhists out of India. Please understand that Buddhism flourished under black kings for over 400 years. When the black Muriam king Brihadatta was killed. This is the start of Buddhism's original sin. Please understand that the Brahmins got into power. What you must understand is that the Brahmins, many of them were also black. Now, the word Aryan means noble ones. Although you had Brahmins in power, the people in India were Buddhists. Push Yahitra did regicide by killing Buddhists. The Brahmins alienated the Buddhists. 
They converted Buddhist temples into an Indo-Aryan cult. On the Purushamitra, they invoke the laws of Manu. The Manu constitution made blacks called Chandalas less than human, and they created the outcasts or the Chandalas who were treated less than animals. Now, let us move into the first century A.D. There was a king called Kanishka, who was a powerful king of the Kushan dynasty. This king was a white king who conquered most of India. The Brahmins united with this king to create what is called white Buddhism. This Buddhism was called Mahayana Buddhism. This white king supported the Brahmins and together they changed the image of the Buddha into what the races in the world call classic. See, classic means white. In music they call white music classic. King Kanishka changed all the images of the Buddha. King Kanishka changed all of the Buddha's images from black to white. He created what is called the classic images and he made the Buddha to look like himself, a white person or a person of Greek descent. Now, Nitrin Shonen mentions about King Kanishka in the Ghost Show. Now, in the same Ghost Show, let's tie this in. It's called the Pure and Far-Reaching Voice. King Kanishka lived some 400 years or more after the passing of the Buddha and ruled according to his will in the kingdom of God Hanra. Now, what does Nitri Shonen mean he ruled by his will? Let us use common sense. The Buddhists in India were black and persecuted. The racist laws of Manu was in effect. You have this white man who was the king who supports Buddhism and he changed all of the images and teach Buddhism with a new language called Sanskrit. This new Buddhism was called Mahayana Buddhism. Please ask this question, or answer this question, why did King Kanishka create his own forward Buddhist council? Mahayana Buddhism is the time when Buddhism was separated by race, culture, language, and a change of history. This is the time in history when we had white Buddhism and black Buddhism. This is where in the Ghost Show, I believe the SGI changed the words in the Ghost Show. And you got to be very careful. The SGI will go in there and they will adopt the words for their particular doctrine. Now, this is what it says. It says in the Ghost Show, prayer reaching voice, but all the people in the kingdom were followers of Hinayana teachings and it was very difficult for the Mahayana teachings to make any progress there. Now, what we understand about King Kanishka was he did a lot to hurt Buddhism or Buddhism was not accepted under him. Now, please understand that Mahayana Buddhism is associated with the Brahmins and Black Buddhism is associated with the Miriams line of King Asoka. We can study the history and culture of Buddhism to know how it was to spread. It was King Kanishka who supported or started Mahayana Buddhism. Nitrin did not use the term Hanayana, which was a negative term. Neither Nitrin supported Mahayana or Hanayana. We must check the SGI's teachings. In the Ghost Show, Pure and far-reaching voice, Nitrin writes, The Buddha long ago entrusted the protection of his teachings to the ruler. Therefore, even the wise men who are sages or worthies may appear. If they do not abide by authority of the ruler, they will not be able to carry out the propagation of Buddhism. And even if it should later be propagated at the beginning, it will without fail meet great obstacles. This is what you must understand 
about the Brahman Pushamisha killed the blacks or the Nagas, Nagamurians. The only Buddhism that could emerge was a white a Brahman Buddhism because at the time of King Kanishka, the Buddhists were under the laws of Manis, the black Buddhists, they were the Chandalas who they had put into slavery. Now, let me explain it this way. Mahayana Buddhism is just like Elvis Presley. See, right here in my hometown of Memphis, Tennessee, rock and roll was started by black people. And the white people liked the music, but it took an Elvis Presley to come along, a white man who could sing the black music. He was the guy that took the black music to white people and took it around the world. He was better suited to take the rock and roll music that we call rock and roll. It was originally black music, but it was a white Elvis Presley that took this music. Now, under King Kanishka, who was a white king who was in charge of India at the time, he was able to take this Mahayana Buddhism because he was the king and he was able to get out and get around. Now, the Chinese got Buddhism many years before the Mahayana Brahmins who were to spread Buddhism via Sanskrit. The Buddhist teachers in China were hundreds of years older than the Sanskrit version. Kumajiva in 405 AD translated the Lotus Sutra from the Chinese versions, which was older than any of the Sanskrit versions of the Buddhist teachings. Now, genetics, with its ability to read the history contained in the human body, three billion bits of information was able to disciple the racist code of Brahmins or Buddhism's original sin. Researchers from Harvard, MIT, and CSIR Center for Cellular, Cellular and Monoclet Molecular Biology in Hyperbod were able to use science to determine when the cast started about 1900 years ago or around the time of the start of Mahayana Buddhism. See, we have science now that can teach us when the caste system started. We don't have to look into the Vedas who were, where they went back and they reinvented the culture, they reinvented the history. We now have science. We got archaeology, archaeology we got anthropology, we have literary science that can teach us things. So, we think that we have given you an understanding of Buddhism's original sins. It started with Push Masitra, who was the Brahman general who first killed the Mauryan king in 184 BC. And from that time, the blacks were not in Buddhist, were not into Buddhism. But from that time on, they started the Mahayana Buddhism. And we come up to the time of Nitran Shonen who taught us, or who teach us, that only the Lotus Sutra is the correct teachings of Buddhism. Fighting in the world for freedom, justice, and equality, we're the Red Sutra. We're called the Proud Black Buddhists. We're going to put you guys on alert in the 15th chapter of the Sutra, where the Buddha stars are the earth. They're trying to us, who try to knock us. We the black Buddha stoppers, that the king never mentioned nothing and done. The black Buddha stoppers, the one that was stoppers that come from India. His name was Zachary Hill in Mecca. The old name for India is the East of Ethiopia. From the land of India called East of Ethiopia, a great man called Shakyamuni Buddha. His great teacher called the Long Tongue Sutra. The Long Tongue Come and tell you. Download the sutra. 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 Come